Hello and welcome to the channel of Sigma Plus Industrial Solutions. In that video, we're going to talk about the history and the origin of the normal probability distributions with its nowadays applications. But before that, we go through that video. I would recommend that you watch the latest video where we have explained the binomial distributions. Or in case that you have the basic knowledge for the binomial distribution, then I believe you're ready to watch that video. So a normal distribution is one of the ways of modeling the data and reflecting the features of observations around its mean or how the set of the values are distributed around the mean. So that, suppose that you're collecting a group of data about the heights of the students in a school or you want to measure the processing time for opening a bank account. You have taken a, a group of data with different sample size, where at the end you plot its histogram and forming a normal distribution. So the first, the first point that you need to know is that any process should inherently behave in a shape of a normal distribution curve, unless there is uh, an assignable cause that is leading to have a non-normal distribution. The origin of the normal probability distribution, it all started with Mr. Abraham de Moivre, who observed that as much as the sample size of uh, the uh, binomial probability is increasing, as closer it will form a normal Bell distribution which was later on developed by Mr. Frederick Gauss, who performed more studies and presented the normal distribution uh, uh, functional uh, or functions that depend, depend mainly upon the mean and the standard deviations. Uh, following that, Mr. Francis Galton showed up with his invented device, which called uh, the Galton board, which demonstrate the central limit theorem which proves the, that with sufficient sample size in a binomial distribution, it will tend to form a normal distribution. So the Galton board, uh, as you can see uh, in the photo in front of you, it consists of a leveled vertical board with um, uh, uh, interleaved rows of uh, pegs. And uh, you can see there are some beads uh, which are dropped from the top and bounce either in the left or in the right. Uh, and eventually they are later on collected into a vertical bins in the, in the bottom and uh, step by step forming a normal distribution curve. So uh, as you can see, that experiment was just a, a physical uh, proof of what Mr. Abraham was uh, proving statistically that by increasing the sample size in a binomial experiment, it will tend to form a normal distribution curve. So uh, if we look to the shape of the normal distribution curve, it consists from the mean, and you will see that that curve will be divided into uh, uniform six uh, intervals. And each interval is known to be with a sigma or the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is a statistical term which is mainly used to describe the spread of the data around the mean. So what do I mean with that? If your standard deviation is low, you will have a, a lower spread of the data uh, between uh, the mean and the, the latest, the, the, the farthest uh, the data point in the uh, sample size. And in case that your standard deviation is, uh, is small, you will have a thinner uh, distribution, which means that most of the spread of the data will be closer to the uh, center point. Okay, and from there we have excluded, we have included the empirical rule. And the empirical rule states that if a distribution follows a bell curve, we would expect approximately that 68, 95, and 99.7% of the values to fall within one, two, and three standard deviations around the mean, respectively. 
Okay, so what do we mean with that? It means that the empirical rule states that each interval has a certain percentage of the data in the sample size. So within one standard deviation, will you will find 68.28% of the data from the total sample size. And within two standard deviation, you will have 95.44% of the data dropping in the sample size, while uh, uh, the 99.73% of the data should be dropping within three standard deviations. The main characteristics of the normal probability distributions, the mean, the median, and the mode are having the same value. Uh, the distribution is a bell shape to, and have a symmetrical uh, shape around the mean, and the total area under the curve should be equal to one. We have to understand that the uh, central limit of the th uh, theorem, which states that if you have any populations that has a mean value mu and the standard deviations, and you have taken a sufficient large random samples from the population, then the distribution of the sample means will be approximately normally distributed, and hence you can implement the empirical rule. A new, new statistical term that is so important to understand as it will be highly used in the statistics which is the z-score. And the z-score is a st statistical term that uh, uh, defines the distance uh, between any data point in the data curve and the mean uh, and uh, in terms of number of standard deviations. So it is the distance in number of standard deviations between any point in the data sample and the sample mean. It can be calculated through the shown formula where uh, z equal x, the interested data point minus mu, the uh, uh, sample average or sample mean divided by the standard deviation. So if you look to the shown graph in front of you, this is my bell curve and uh, this is the mean value and this is my six intervals or six standard deviations. So if I want to know the distance between the mean value and that point, I will count the number of standard deviation. So that's one and two. So that means that the distance is equal to X bar plus two standard deviation. If I want to know the distance between uh, uh, that point and the standard deviation, that will be negative one standard deviations. Uh, I just want to correct myself. The distance is the number of standard deviation. So uh, if I return back to the point which I highlighted, the distance is two standard deviations, okay, and not uh, x bar plus two standard deviations. This is just to explain the distance between the mean and any data point in uh, inside the distribution curve. So now to better understand uh, those terminologies, let's take a work example. In that work example, we will. Uh, solve it in two different ways. The first way is through the uh, empirical uh, rule, and the second way will be through the uh, Microsoft Excel. <laughs> Sorry. So a continuous improvement team of a factory specialized in producing electrical control panels is performing a production time study. They have collected the production time report for the last 50 panels produced as per the shown table. So this is the list of uh, or the sample uh, size of 50 panels with its time studies. And what we want to know is the probability that a panel, uh, what will be the probability that a panel consumes no more than 47.3 working hours. So uh, the first thing that we have done, we have uh, plotted the histogram of the sample size uh, for the readings uh, that we have. And we have plotted the uh, statistical descriptions where we have the mean value of 50.46 and one standard, uh, and the standard deviation is equal to 3.166. Now, uh, again, that the, we assume that the shape is forming a normal distribution curve. And we, if we divide it into six intervals or six standard deviations where the standard deviations is equal to 3.166, then 
we can start to calculate, first of all, uh, using the empirical rule, the uh, z-score. So the z-score here will be, uh, remember that the target is to calculate the probability that the, the panel will not, will not take longer or maximum 47.3 hours. So our interest point is 47.3 minus the mean or the average value, which is 50.46 uh, hours divided by the standard deviations, which is 3.166. That is giving me minus one. So what does it mean? It means that uh, the data point of 47.3 is uh, far from the mean with minus one standard deviations, right? So if I refer back to the uh, empirical rule, what will be the probability uh, that the, the uh, panel will not uh, consume longer than 47.3? So I know that the distance between uh, the mean and the minus one standard division is 34.13. And I know that this is a symmetrical distribu uh, distribution shape. So that means that this area is totally 50%. So if I subtract the 50%, 34.13 uh, from the 50%, it will give me uh, uh, approximately 15.7 or 15.8%, which is also equal to the 2.14% plus the 13.59%. So based on that, I can say that the probability that uh, the uh, one control panel uh, will not uh, consume longer than 47.3 hours will be approximately about 15.73%. So you have seen how we have uh, solved that equation uh, in, uh, uh, in a very short way uh, by using the empirical rule. But what about if I want to utilize the Microsoft Excel uh, to verify those results? So what did I do is that I have plotted the, the samples, uh, the list of the sample in a vertical column, but please, do not forget uh, to uh, set up uh, the distribution of the data from the smallest to the uh, largest, okay? Please do not forget that step. Otherwise, you, your uh, results will be not correct. So the first thing that we need to do is to uh, uh, list out the descriptive statistics for my sample size. So I go to the data, I go to the data analysis, click on the descriptive statistics, uh, select the column of the uh, interested sample uh, data, uh, click enter. Don't forget to put labels in the first row because we have a title uh, in the column and select summary statistics, uh, confidence and uh, uh, level for the means and select the output range location in the Excel sheet. We would plot it here and then you click okay. So. We can conclude, or we have concluded here that my uh, mean value is 15.457, say 5.46, sorry, yeah, 46. And the standard deviation will be 3.17, okay? Now, as you can see also, I have listed the formulas for calculating the z-score the likelihood and the probability. And we will understand soon what's the difference between the likelihood and the probability. So now I want to calculate the likelihood of each data. So the likelihood formula is norm dot distribution, open the bracket. My point of interest is the 41.73. The mean value is 50.46 and the uh, uh, standard deviation is the 3.17. And uh, for the cumulative, I will type false and I will tell you why. Then uh, I will do the same, uh, I can take the same formula here. I will take copy and I, uh, I go again to the next one, I make it paste. And instead of false, I will put true. So as you can see, uh, the likelihood is the individual probability for the individual point. 
but for the probability, it is the accumulated probability. And in our case, when we are discussing about what will be the probability that our panel will not consume longer than 47.3 uh, hours, so I'm speaking here about the probability. Now we can drag the formulas up to the end. And here I'm ready now to calculate my z-score because this, to calculate the z-score, you need to know what's the probability. So I plot, uh, I can add the title here of the z-score. And here I will implement the formula for the z-score, which is equal to the norm dot s dot env and I select my probability here. I click enter and then I can drag my formula up to the end. Now I can here, I can extract two many very nice shapes. So the first shape, uh, graph that I can uh, uh, plot is the z-score uh, with the likelihood, okay? And uh, select, we can select the both columns. And it, it will show you the uh, normal Bell distribution curve, uh, which is uh, the uh, z-score with the uh, likelihood, right? As, as you can see here. Uh, you can also plot uh, the uh, z-score with the uh, uh, probability. Uh, for the accumulated probability, and uh, uh, you can plot it like that. So maybe we have done some mistakes. Well, yeah, we have selected one more cell. So I you selected the both columns. Yeah, and you select the graph where it shows to you the accumulated probability. The, but here, this is the uh, uh, the graph between the z-score and uh, the uh, probability or the likelihood. But if I want to know uh, what will be, uh, if I want to know the uh, the probability of the time and, uh, and uh, the likelihood or the probability, then what I can do, I can plot uh, the first, uh, another graph and I plot it here. So what you can see here is the likelihood that uh, uh, my panel will not take longer than 47 as an individual, individual likelihood, it will be equal to 7% as you can see, right? That's, uh, that's that, uh, the, the individual probability. But this is not our case here. What we are interested to know is the probability that it will not take take longer or maximum 47.3. Uh, so I can uh, uh, plot the graph for the accumulated probabilities, as we can see. Uh, plot again the graph here. Okay, and this is my accumulated. This this is the similar graph that we have plotted here before, but it was for the this z score. But now, if I want to know the for this forty seven point three, as you can see here, and uh, that should give me the fifteen point ninety four or fourteen fifteen point nine. So if I just uh, I can make it a little bit bigger. So you can see the 15.9, or I can just uh, take it directly uh, from the uh, uh, table where you can see that the 47.3 hours is located at, at uh, negative uh, one standard deviations from the mean and has the probability that of uh, about 15.9% that uh, the, the, the uh, uh, the control panel will uh, not consume more than 47.3 uh, hours, okay? So we have shown 
in that example that uh, the the uh, how did we uh, uh, conclude the probabilities in two different way the first way which was the shorter way by utilizing the empirical rule and the second way was through the uh, uh, microsoft excel so at the end of that video uh, I would like to thank you for uh, your good uh, listening and watching and for the next time. Thank you.